You're tuned in to The Keetra Show and listening to SOB, Style of Business. The podcast with your host, Keetra. We aim to highlight the ongoing trek of entrepreneurs and business owners from around the globe, featuring stories that recount their struggles, experiences, and inevitable road to success and self-fulfillment. Welcome to SOB. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in for another great episode of SOB Style of Business. This is your host, Keetra. And today we have a guest who has previously joined us in the past. I'm speaking again with the GTEx co-founders, Simone Vincenzi, and he was with us last year. We talked a bit about the initial foundations of him being able to build and scale his business. And today we're going to be hopping into some of the new projects that he's working on and some new tips that will help us in our own ventures. And I, I know he has a, a couple of great resources to share and just so excited to get started with that. So, Simone, go ahead and give us an introduction for those of us who are not familiar with your previous interview. And then let us know how you've been, how you, what, what you're working on, and then we'll get started. Oh, yeah. Thanks a lot for having me back on the show, Kitra. Really, really, really appreciate it. Well, uh, it was fun. It was fun last time. So Definitely. Uh, it's, 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 it's great to be back. <laughs> now, for those of you that uh, don't uh, have, have not heard about the past episode or don't know of me, then uh, I own uh, for I don't know, three companies at the moment. We have a company when we turn experts into authorities. We, do, we offer trainings on that side. We also own a sales training for recruitment agents. So we work in a corporate space. And then we own an investment company when we invest in small businesses to help them grow and scale and we become shareholder of those businesses. That's something that I've been uh, actually launched recently because uh, we have acquired our first uh, our first company in January, which I'm really, really excited. There are very strong developments going on on that side with some million pound contracts that are just there ready to be closed. So <laughs> we are, Great. We are, we're, we're really flying on a high in that part. But my background was in the catering industry and I started everything with a hundred pound, not really knowing between my business partner and I what we were doing. And we just had a lot of resilience and we wouldn't take no for an answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's I, I totally understand. The theme of the story, and uh, that led us to create GTEx, uh, which is a hub uh, and a community for people like us, for people that uh, have not been, uh, didn't grow up with a silver spoon, uh, didn't grow up from uh, maybe wealthy families, and uh, they decided to create their own fortune. They decided to work hard for for their own things. Uh, created this place as a hub for those people that everything that they build, they had to work for it. Whether they are multimillionaires now or they are just starting out, uh, we all that have that one thing in common, that we are hungry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at some point, we've been uh, literally hungry. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> we didn't have enough money to buy food, but, <laughs> but oh. also we are hungry to create a better life, create um, and to do some meaningful work. And that's it what led to the creation of GTEx to bring yeah. those people together because we believe that together we can achieve more than, than by ourselves. That's all our entire ethos. Exactly. Yeah. And I know last time we, we talked about the success that you were able to experience once you kind of broke away from your comfort zone, you know, starting out in the restaurant industry and then just deciding to go out on your own and get things done. Let's kind of retouch on that, and then we'll get started with some of the more in-depth things that you're doing now as far as scaling GTEx and, and moving forward with that. You remember you, you told me about, I think you said you were 16 or 17 when you kind of left, and you went out on your own to get started. You started in the catering industry. Yeah, and then you, I was, uh, I was uh, 14 when I started oh, my 14. first job, and full-time when I was 15, 16. From 14 to 16, it was almost like part-time, a part-time basis. And then at 18, I left home as soon as I could. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wanted to, not because I didn't love my family. I just uh, had a very strong sense of independence and uh, just wanted to prove to myself that I could make it. And also I found that I wasn't the typical kid that uh, was excelling academically. And for my mom, I, I literally broke her heart when I quit university or I, I didn't. Like I just tried for a few months, but it, it wasn't for me. And I had I knew that I had to carve my own path 
and moving into a new country made things way easier. Because I think that when you're surrounded by the same people, you tend to be the same person you were. And it's more difficult to create change and to change and to reinvent yourself in the environment where you have been always in, day in and day out since you were born. Mm. It becomes more difficult. You have uh, your families that have expectations about uh, who you should be or you should not be. You have your friends that have expectations about who you should be or you should not be. You have your girlfriend or boyfriend that has expectations about who you should be or you should not be. And I'm not saying it's impossible to change in this kind of circumstances. But I think it's easier when no one knows you. Yeah. Where almost you are nobody. Exactly. Yeah. And you ended uh, up, yeah, because you ended up moving. Did you, you tell me you, you ended up moving almost so far away yeah. from home that they can't, they couldn't even uh, reach you for some time. Yeah. I had a, when I was a teenager, I had a very quite troublesome relationship with my parents. So when I moved to the UK, unfortunately, then told to them for about three years. That's something that uh, things have changed now. Fortunately, I have a beautiful relationship with my mom. It's, a, it's absolutely recovered every single part. But for me, I needed, I needed that space to develop myself and to grow my own personality and to yeah. not feel I was tied to an idea of someone else. And on all, my mom's defense, actually, she has always been super encouraging on everything I was doing. She wasn't even like, she, you know, sometimes you have this kind of parents that they are very, very protective or they really want you to do one thing. Otherwise, you disappoint them. Now, my mom has never been that kind of mom. But the fact that I didn't go to university, that, <laughs> that yeah. was pushing a big buck, a big button for her. A bummer, right. I, I totally understand. I, I tell you what, so do you do you feel like if you had just went ahead with, you know, moving forward with the university and doing the traditional route that a lot of people take, do you feel like you would be where you are now? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I kind of have this personality, which is a, sometimes a problem as well, but I only do what I like. And <laughs> yeah. that's, uh, in fact, I give my mom a really hard time, but I only do what I like. So I couldn't even imagine completing university because it's not that I don't love studying. It's different. I love knowledge. I'm thirsty for knowledge. At university, I was even studying philosophy just because uh, it's the discipline of knowledge. But what I didn't like uh, was uh, the way I had to study because I'm a very practical person. I want to learn something and apply it immediately. And at university, unfortunately, that didn't happen in that way. So definitely I wouldn't be where I am right now. I'm, I'm happy I made the decisions I made uh, because uh, I can say that I built my experience on the ground, not on the books, but on the ground exactly. <laughs> in every scenario. <laughs> Exactly. Hey, well, it, it turned out to be a plus in your favor because, you know, sometimes when we are afraid to go against the grain, we end up doing ourselves a major disservice. So that is good kudos. Uh, absolutely. Kudos and, and, you. And, you know, I think a few months ago, I had one of the highlights of my life on a personal level. I've been interviewed. Uh, I'm often on television here in the UK, but I've been interviewed uh, for some major Italian TV news channels recently. And uh, the highlight for the both for me was when my grandma oh. <laughs> sent, me, sent me a picture of me on television. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> and saying, oh, my God, this Simone is on TV on our WhatsApp, on our family WhatsApp group, because my <laughs> grandma uses WhatsApp. So, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> she put them, and I think uh, it was a, a big highlight right. because uh, a lot of people in my family still don't have a clue about what I do here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, I bet you that I, was I, a big I, surprise. Yeah, it was a huge surprise uh, for because it wasn't announced and uh, my grandma was just watching the news and suddenly <laughs> it was me talking for 15 minutes there. That is absolutely great. And I know a large part of your success has been your personality, which obviously you are approachable. People can talk to you and you're able to really make people comfortable when it comes to helping them to develop their business ideas and planning. So Last time you talked about how you kind of infuse a little bit of the entertainment and get the crowd in a space to where they can kind of receive what you're offering in terms of the coaching and the different services that you guys have. Give us a little bit about how you're able to really tap into your audience as an entrepreneur and get people on board to what you have to offer. I think it is uh, about finding, as you mentioned before, 
for, in my case, is about uh, entertainment because uh, I've always been a kind of entertaining person, a bit extrovert. And never mind the spotlight. Actually, love the spotlight. Uh, I've always been. I always love that. But that doesn't mean that someone who is uh, more introverted cannot have the same success uh, in terms of building a relationship with people. Yeah. Because uh, people connect. Uh, with people. So and as long as they connect with the, the reason why you're doing what you're doing, then uh, you're able to create a deep connection with your audience. If you think about at the beginning of the interview, when I talked about GTEx, I talked about uh, why we started GTEx and uh, what GTEx is about. It's a hub for people that have built their fortune, they're building their fortune by themselves by working really hard. And that, no matter if I'm introverted, extroverted, that. Uh, if you are that kind of person that believes in those kind of things, it will strike a chord with you. And I think that this can be used in, a, in everyone, in everyone's presentation or in everyone's pitch or any time you are talking to someone. It's about being yourself. So if you are a very entertaining, extroverted person, then use that, amplify that, because people will love that side of you. I often to music. I started my presentation with music, uh, playing a didgeridoo. I know it's a bit of a weird instrument. Yeah. <laughs> or I will bring like a weird uh, instruments uh, um, from different cultures. That's a passion I have. I've recently started learning magic and a bit of stand-up comedy. Um, so I could be more entertaining because the entertainment I found is one of my strengths. But then, uh, for example, there, there are other people that have a beautiful soft uh, energy, very calm, very energy. Like, it's so, so beautiful that they're able to kind of draw the audience into their world, into their inner world. And if that's your strength, great. If you have a very strong inner world and you're, and you're talking and bringing, allow people to get in, to get to know you in a more intimate level, and you will find that you will create a very deep connection with your audience. So it doesn't matter what spectrum of introvert or extroverted you are, you can always use your personality, your why, to create a bigger impact and a better connection with the audience. Exactly. Yeah. And, and speaking of which, I mean, I, sometimes when you're meeting people socially, it's kind of easy to gauge and, and get a sense of who you're able to connect with. But let's talk about how to do that online, you know, specifically when you are growing a business or just trying to establish some sort of connection. And I know that you have started working on LinkedIn a bit more and really kind of delving into using that to grow your business and also to just create relationships. So let's let's talk about that a minute. Absolutely. Uh, I love LinkedIn. I absolutely love LinkedIn. It's definitely a great platform for business. It's like a giant networking event that never sleeps. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> That's what I really love about LinkedIn. And a lot of people, probably like myself, uh, they didn't focus on LinkedIn for years. I personally focused and made multiple six figures with my businesses uh, on uh, Facebook and mainly using Facebook groups, uh, a bit of Facebook advertising, but not too much of that, but still getting some leads in that way. And uh, using speaking engagement in terms of live audiences. And then I decided, you know what? There is this thing called LinkedIn. Uh, instead of just having a profile and posting, just copy and paste some posts so I can, exactly, I can yeah. show people that I'm alive. Let me do something more with that. And I spent eight months literally diving in. My team and I, um, we spent uh, eight months just focusing on LinkedIn. And we found that there is nothing at the moment, I believe, that is more powerful for few, for few reasons. One, LinkedIn is now, let's say, ramping up their social media game. They understood that as a platform, they were a bit behind from Facebook or Instagram or other platforms. And they were not serving the users at their full potential. So what now they're doing, they are given crazy organics reach. I had organics post which organic for people that are starting out means you are you're not paying for advertisement you're just publishing on your linkedin profile i had a few videos that went on like 16000 views 31000 views oh, wow. without spending a penny in advertisement that kind of stuff doesn't happen on facebook yeah oh no <laughs> yeah you you're definitely going to spend <laughs> you can add but spend a bit of money you just, you don't have to spend too much money but you got to spend a bit of money definitely no 
now for free and definitely not in front of the caliber of people that are spending the majority of their time on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a platform where people that are in business, that are in careers, they're spending their time on. It's not a platform or they don't go into the mindset of finding some entertainment. Go on Facebook, be looking to see what your friends do, what your families do. Uh, maybe you have a, now you get find a viral video that pops up and you start watching that video and two hours later you wake up because you've watched another 15 different videos that were popping up similar right. to that. LinkedIn is completely different. LinkedIn, people are there for business. And so one thing that although is overlooked is that the most important part of LinkedIn is not the posting of ideas, is that the connection that you're able to build in the back end. And that's the thing, Keith, what a lot of people are not focusing on because they don't know maybe how to do it, they don't know how to find the right people. And uh, I think we can explore a bit of that, if that's okay for you. Absolutely, yeah. I am almost certain that a lot of us are not really 100% sure on how to leverage LinkedIn uh, you know, as, as a business owner. So any advice or tips that you have, feel free to share. All right, perfect. So LinkedIn is an incredible search feature where you can find your ideal client consistently. And uh, if you go in the search bar, for example, and you put the kind of title of the person that it is your ideal client. So give an example, I work with a lot of coaches, I, lot, I work with a lot of speakers, with a lot of influencers. So I will put the word coach. I will put the word speaker. My business partner, which works in the recruitment industry, will put the word recruiter. And then you can immediately narrow these people down by location. So now I want to find, uh, let's say, all the coaches, or I want to find all the recruiters that are living in Houston. And uh, actually, I want to find uh, all the recruiters that are living in Houston, but they have been to a specific school. You can also do that too. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you can go as detailed as possible in terms of uh, your demographic. And then you can connect with all those people and build relationships. Now, that's something that you can't do in any other social media. You can go on Facebook and see people that are part of Facebook groups. They can give you an idea of why they're there. But there are a lot of people that belong to Facebook groups that they just found it out of themselves there. Exactly, <laughs> so yeah. They're not really your ideal client in that scenario. And now, the most important thing to understand about LinkedIn is that it is a relationship game. So... It's like uh, when you go to a networking event, you cannot take uh, meet one person for the first time and then you take your stack of business card and you throw your stack of business card in their face. <laughs> right. You wouldn't do that. And that's unfortunately what a lot of people do on LinkedIn. Uh, as soon as they connect with you, they start pitching you. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's true. I think uh, there is a right to pitch because, of course, you're looking for business. That's why you're using LinkedIn for it. But relationship comes before business. And so there is uh, this kind of unwritten rule on LinkedIn that uh, like when you meet someone over a networking event, you can do a bit of chit chat. You can say, hey, what are you working on? Why do you, are you here? Like, I see something interesting on your profile. Tell me more about that. This kind of rules, they don't change just yeah. because they are online. They are always the same. People are people. Online conversation is a conversation. But what you can do which I absolutely love, is to use, uh, and this is, a, I just created a course recently called LinkedIn Mastery when we explore this method, which is called the hybrid method because when you are connecting with a lot of people, it can be very time intensive. You need to find the right people you want to connect with and then manually you need to connect with everyone, send the messages, wait for the response yeah. and then engage with them. But if you, there are some tools, uh, uh, one which I love is called Meet Leonard. It's a, it costs $15 a month. I absolutely love that tool. What you can do, you can send automated connection. So once you have identified your search and you narrow down the people you want to connect with, then the tool automatically can send automated connections to everyone. Okay. And so as, as, as long as the first message is conversational and is not a pitch, it can also send the first messages to all those people. So just imagine that you find a bunch of people that are your ideal client and uh, you're sending them the connection, they accept the connection, and then the bot immediately sends them that first conversation starter. That makes their life a hundred times easier. <laughs> it makes it easier and it also takes out a lot of the, the legwork. So it's, it's, it's uh, you know, because you don't have to do a lot of managing, but 
I really love the tip you shared on really narrowing it down to more of the ideal client base as opposed to just pitching everybody just because they connected, you know, and sometimes people connect just because of, you know, I don't know, maybe just like you said, if you went to a similar school or maybe you guys are in the same LinkedIn group, you know, people will connect. So I guess the, I guess it just really depends. Exactly. You want to identify if someone connects with you, it's good to identify why did they connect with you. Right. So sometimes like it's good to ask, hey, I thank you for, for the connection. Any particular reason why you wanted to connect? And sometimes it will be, you know what, you just popped up on the recommended connection and I decided to connect with you. Say, well, thank you. Now we are connected. Great. So sometimes there is not even like a deeper reason. Like if you meet someone at a networking event, they might start talking to you just because you are in the same room. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not because there are specific reasons. But sometimes some people will connect with you because they find something interesting on your profile. So I have a lot of people that, for example, want to connect with me because uh, on my profile, I'm an official contributor for Forbes magazine, Entrepreneur magazine, the, the Huffington Post. And uh, I have a lot of people that are connecting with me because I said, well, I wanted to connect with people that are contributing on Forbes. Yeah. Okay, that, that's already great conversation started. So now we can start talking about Forbes. Wow. In that scenario. Yeah, that is perfect. That is great. And tell us about your, your course, Simone. Like, is this something that you are, I know you've mentioned, uh, it's called LinkedIn Mastery. Give us the highlights of that and how we can get more information and sign up for that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so there is a, the, the entire course works on uh, four different areas. One is the optimization of your LinkedIn profile, because if someone is connecting with you or you're connecting with someone, someone is going to check you out your profile. And if your profile sucks, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the right. conversation is going to die there. Right. You're absolutely so right. Step number one is the, uh, the profile optimization. Then the second step is understanding how to use the advanced feature of LinkedIn. Because the fee LinkedIn has a free version, which is a software, part of the software that everyone uses. Plus, you have some paid features. One of them is Sales Navigator, which is literally a proper sales system that they plug in on LinkedIn and is part of the LinkedIn suite of products. And uh, it's not that expensive. It's about like $50, $60 a month, something like that. But it gives you way more insights and automatically actually it recommends you the leads that you should be connecting to and you should pitch to uh, with all their algorithm. Incredibly powerful piece of software and definitely worth even more than $50 a month. Uh, of course, if someone is using it right. So we work on module two on how to set it up and use it properly. And then module three, which is this step number three, we work on implementing this hybrid method. So how do we craft a message that is uh, conversational enough mm -hmm. that can be used by a bot, but uh, also scalable enough that uh, can be applied to everyone, but also personal enough uh, to be received as a personal message? And how do we use the full automation and how do we set it up and how do we use this automation to get leads and get clients? And step number four then is conversion. How do you take those clients, those leads that you got, and then convert them into paying clients? So that's the full course of LinkedIn Mastery. Normally, is $597. I'm happy for you guys to give you a special offer for those of you that are listening here, uh, which you can get it for only $297. And uh, also, I'm going to send the Kitria the, the first module for free on uh, creating a, a great LinkedIn profile. So you can watch the free module if you like. You can buy the course. If you want, just use the free module. Just use the free module and enjoy, <laughs> and enjoy that one. Right. Good, good, good. Yeah, right. Yeah, we, we definitely, I, I will absolutely be posting that information once this episode is live and in the show notes, of course. And before we wrap up, Simone, it has been great having you back. Third time's a charm. So we'll definitely be looking forward to set that up soon. Uh, let us know where we can find you online and your social media handles, all that other good stuff. Drop everything that you have. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, if you like podcasts, uh, uh, maybe you want to also subscribe to mine, uh, which is called uh, Explode Your Expert Business Show. Uh, we interview really successful entrepreneurs on how they build their business. Uh, they have built a minimum of six or seven figure businesses. And also uh, we interview some of our clients on their journey to becoming authorities in their field. So uh, you hear it from the experts and you hear it from uh, the people that are applying this methodology and working uh, 
through it day after day uh, in their business. So that's one place. And also you can uh, connect me on uh, connect with me on our Facebook group, which again is called in the same way, Explode Your Expert Biz. So it's Explode Your Expert Biz. I'll send you all the links to Kitria okay. so then you can uh, you will be able to, to join the Facebook group too. All right, perfect. Simone, good deal. We are so thankful that you took the time to speak with us and definitely looking forward to keeping up with your next steps. So you enjoy the rest of your day and we'll touch base with you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me back. Uh, I had a great time as usual. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out with us here on SOB. We hope this episode has been resourceful. If you'd like to check out the latest articles or follow Keetra's website updates, just log on to Keetra.com or follow her on Twitter at K-E-E-T-R-I-A.